holy shit, there's six months to the Olympics and like I've spiked up twice. If you really think about it time-wise, like feels a little crazy, <laughs> but then I'm like, it's okay, like <laughs> you're gonna be fine. Trying not to get frustrated and trying to like remember to be patient and like trust this and not have the doubt creep in. My sports psych said it really well the other day that I'm probably way further ahead in certain things that I don't even realize, like some of the strength side, some of the mechanic side that we talked about with, with uh, sprinting again, but then maybe a little bit behind on like some of the speed endurance and that's okay. So just remembering like I'm gonna be further ahead in some and further behind in others. Definitely doesn't mean I haven't like cried about it. <laughs> I literally like <laughs> cried the other day with TJ, like, oh, this is brutal. So different than what I thought a typical Olympic year would have looked like. I've been lucky to have our porch gym. I swear to God, there's a couple times where I thought we were gonna like bust through the floor of the porch because we did a hang clean and like someone failed and just dropped the weight on the porch and it just felt like the whole porch was gonna <laughs> cave in. But yeah, like lifting with the boot at the time, like lifting was like kind of the only training that I could do and to have my roommates and TJ and like all of us out there like being able to lift and grind together. It was a good motivator to like set goals with lifting and like how strong can I get in this time? Should I like hit my bench PR because that's all I could do with a boot? I was like, yeah, I got so strong. My dad's bike was like a really cool thing that happened probably towards the end of quarantine. It was the same bike that he started riding on after he like basically exploded his knee in a huge uh, off-road motorcycle accident. So really special to have that bike here and feel like this was something he used to recover and like to get back out there. And now like I'm using it to recover and build strength and speed again. And yeah, it's like a cool way to connect with him. So I like got on the line for the first time against my two training partners and I was like shaking. I was so nervous. Like, cause I'd done a few reps on my own but getting on the line next to people, like it was a feeling I haven't had in like a year. It was really cool. I was like very excited. And my first thought was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna get smoked. But then I was like, Maddie, shh, don't, don't, just like have fun with it. It's your first time back on the line. I ended up like edging them by a tiny bit and like kind of shocked myself a bit. And I think it was cool, like recognizing, like we said, the strength from like the porch gym, like definitely is transferring. So much of it is attributable to like what you're doing day in, day out. No matter what happened, she just took the rough times on the chin, let the great times build her up, and you know, continued to like just inch up, even if it's like two steps forward, one step back on a given day. Every day she's picking out something and you know, she's like the 0.1% better person who's like looking at every nook and cranny, like how can I get a little bit better? I know this year a big one has been 7,000 RPM, which is like, you know, when you're all the way revving. Um, that was one of her dad's racing analogies. Recently in the last few races, like down the home stretch, she's been thinking about hunting um, and less so technical cues, but really, more kind of primal cues. So I think she's feeling pretty ready, ready to hunt out there. He sent this to me when I was in Europe, like racing alone, trying to qualify, like, kind of getting better each race and, and in this grind process of like, okay, we'll see if we can qualify for not. We're at this like final push of our Olympic dream. Um, and this quote was essentially, it had the Olympic creed and then it also had this paragraph from the person who wrote the caption that essentially said that the goal of the Olympics isn't to have conquered or to have won, but to have fought well. And he essentially said, no matter whether you make the games or not, no matter what the end result is, you embody that Olympic spirit and that idea of just 
fighting well and giving everything you have to a goal and chasing a dream like 100%. That meant more to me than I feel like it, <laughs> like anything has that like, sorry I'm like getting emotional about it, but I know. <laughs> um, yeah, especially from a coach that I've worked with for so long. Um, sorry. <laughs> without even like knowing whether we made the team or not like saying I'm proud of you because of who you are and how you have approached this process means more than anything right like it we're not defined by sport we're not defined by what we do what our job is anything like that right like we're defined by who we are like how we approach people in the world and how we engage and not necessarily the accomplishments or track for me like I'm not defined by this Olympic dream or this Olympic goal sure it's something I've worked my whole life for and I've loved that process but it's more about how that process has made me who I am today and how my coach and I have also built that along with the support system. I was in Scotland at St. Andrews with my little sister, Nikki, who is finishing her master's degree. And I actually got a text from a Canadian PT who helped me when, with my foot surgery and everything. And she texted me saying, I'm so proud of you. I can't believe you're an Olympian. And I was like, what do you mean? Like, I hadn't seen anything. I was like refreshing my email. She sent me the press release. My name was on the list. I had to like refresh the page like 10 times to make sure I'm like, okay, my name is really on the list. Like, oh my God, freaking out. Um, and immediately FaceTime my mom and it was me and my sister and my mom just like all bawling. Just a surreal moment and like a moment of so much like relief and like excitement and joy and like also a little bit sad. Like I wish my dad was there to see it, but at the same time like it didn't feel as like sad of a moment that way because I feel like he's been with me this whole time and I think my sister who isn't really one to talk about our dad that much a couple days before we found out was really like, I feel like dad's energy with us right now. I was like, I think you're right. Like there's, there's little things. I read Alexi Papa's book, Bravey, and in particular, this one quote, I put as my phone background and I looked at it every day and the quote was, not your first, not your last, enjoy your now, now will go fast. And it just grounded me in this present moment of being grateful for where I am, cherishing every step of this journey, no matter the end result, and just, yeah, letting go of any of the pressure or expectations that may have been on me and just really being present. Like, now we'll go fast. Like, I love, I love that. <laughs> the Canadians should be very proud of themselves. 321.84, just narrowly outside the Canadian record. Is your mama going to the Olympics? Huh? Huh? Is she going to Tokyo? Yeah. And regardless if she did or didn't go to the Olympics, like she is literally a superhero to people. And they want to, and there are little girls who are running track that want to be like Maddie Price. And I don't know anyone like that, and I don't know anything you could be more proud of.